Lakeland PBS presents Common Ground, brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Production funding of Common Ground is made possible in part by First National Bank Bemidji, continuing their second century of service to the community, member FDIC. Welcome to Common Ground. I'm producer director Scott Knudsen. In this episode, we follow a grassroots nonprofit native traditional skills organization, Manitou Ogitagon. Bujo Benesa de Goshen and Dijna Kanagu, Makwa and Dudem, Gawa, Baba Gunakag and Dunjiba. My name is Zach Early. I'm with Money Duo Get the Gun. We're a community led nonprofit that focuses on language and culture and are reviving our traditional ways and also through this we we are healing ourselves. Buju nenu kasi endago mus nendo dem begani sieben sindun jaba bemichi kamagenda. My name is Caitlin Grenier and I'm the co-director, co-founder of Money Do Ogitagan. Money Do Ogitagan is a grassroots community-led nonprofit organization that started as a dream and a vision with me and my deceased father, Larry Stilde, who is a Panema elder. He's from the community of Panema on the Red Lake Indian Reservation. So it was brought to fruition by our co-director Zach Early, who's from White Earth, and a founding group of board members who are all enrolled in the Red Lake and White Earth reservations. I'm Ojibwe from White Earth. My dad's Ojibwe and Newisa Kodeo. I'm mixed up. We did the snowshoe class at the Panema Roundhouse, and the Roundhouse is a place where we, a lot of uh, cultural activities happen and ceremonies. Yeah, the Roundhouse is a really, it's a special place for all of us because we all come together there. A lot of times we just have informal celebrations and sometimes ceremonies and get-togethers and workshops and classes. We, we do a lot of like things that center around the season, seasonal work and the spiritual things that our uh, people were given and that are we're trying to revive. Things like the, we have a sugar bush camp and we've even uh, made canoes, bir birch bark canoes, we glass a gym on them and snowshoes, agamuk. Well, like the focus that I, I do a lot is language. One of the events that Money Duo Gitagan had during the winter, because our work is seasonal, was a snowshoe build. To us, the snowshoe build was encompassing much more than just making a piece of art or functional something to wear that we need. For us, we were bringing together different people one of them was Nate Johnson. He's a local artist and uh, a respected friend of ours. He lives off the land. And Mary Moose, who's an indigenous elder, Ojibwe first language speaker, who also serves as a, like a visor to us. Nate Johnson is a local artist and community member who has a vast knowledge in a lot of um, ways of living off the land. and canoe building and also these old uh, life ways and also Mary Moose and we tried to combine everyone's knowledge and to me it was a learning experience because I've never made snowshoes but 
I was learning just as much as anybody else, like, so. The work that we do at Mani Duol Gitsagan is multi-generational, so it's very important to us that we include people of all ages, youth, elders, anyone who wants to participate and learn and teach and share. So we were really honored to take the kids from Red Lake schools out into the woods to harvest the materials for the black ash for the snowshoe making. And one reason that I find it so important to be able to do that is because there's this misconception among a lot of people that these are materials or resources that we're using to create something. But what, what I learned from my dad and my uncles is that, you know, we're connected to everything that's here and those are actually our relatives. So who here has used snowshoes? Has everybody used them in the sugar bush? Nope. Is that what Raise I heard? Your hand if you've used Who's used snowshoes? Nope. Oh, some of you have. Okay, good. This is a, one of the traditional trees of this area for snowshoes is the black ash. How do you say? Black ash. Agamatic. Agamatic snowshoe tree, eh? Yeah. Snowshoe tree. So, uh, mm -hmm. and look at you can you see how when I when I rub it, a little kind of some flakes fall off. That's one key, and if, if, it, if it weren't frozen right now, we'd all have wet feet, because it's kind of wet here, so black ash, black ash likes wet feet. So does anybody else know what black ash could be used for? The same tree that works for snowshoes is good for, for your basket, so now you know a good spot to make baskets here. We took you to our spot. And look how straight this tree is, eh? Everybody look at that. It's no, there's no kinks and wobbles in it. You know, it's a perfectly straight tree. One thing that, you really want to look at it, and you might have to look carefully, to st and you may not be able to see this yet, but next year you will. <laughs> if you want a tree that, that goes straight up, and there's no twists in the bark. Sometimes you'll see a tree that's got twists in the bark, and, and that doesn't work. And then, and then everybody look at the branches, and, and uh, see how they kinda, they're kind of fat and stubby? Like a, they got like a fat finger on them. The trees have fat fingers. That's one really... Good key. Somebody, Vince was saying, a friend Vince Johnson, he couldn't come here, he's saying it looks like, a, somebody told him it looks like a chicken foot. You get those fat fingers of a chicken foot. So anyway, those are some, some clues to help you find black ash. Yeah, we had Mary Moose, she did the blessing and prayer, talked to the trees before we harvested, and then Nate shared his knowledge of how to check the tree for the growth rings and what is an ideal type of tree to use. We didn't just go and cut a tree, it was uh, a lot of looking around and checking different trees. And when we finally did cut the tree, we offered tobacco and the tree was cut down and, and then we split it out in the woods and a lot of the students participated and it was just a really good time. So that's what we're gonna do with our group this week and you guys will see more of it. We're gonna cut this tree today and I'm gonna show you how we split it apart. Cool. So we start to work these down just by hand using some simple tools. Okay, and then cool. maybe later in the week we'll show you how, how you take a deer skin for you hunters and people that know hunters. Take a deer skin and turn it. Start to work on turning it into this lacing. Pretty amazing, huh? Just two things. A tree and a deer skin and you get that. So everything you need is right here in the woods. It's almost like a, as, as a teacher or I'm learning just as much as somebody who is supposedly a student. I think that we just learn from each other. To me, uh, that's what a teaching is, is just as much learning as it is sharing. Just being there and participating. Oh, that would be awesome. 
crossing it. We have a lot of kids. Almost like it's going to fall that way. <laughs> well, I mean, we have 250 in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and there was... Uh, and then at the same time, that way. It turned into firewood. Like there are kids are pouring the big basket yeah, Or basket, yeah. yeah. Use it for something. We had the ceremonies. We tried our best to ask permission first before we took the tree or we uh, used tobacco, you know, talk to that tree because it's living just like us and can hear us. And That's one of the things that we try to teach is the respect for all living things and we use our tobacco and our ceremonies to show that we appreciate the gifts and, and we ask permission. So to me, a bapage mak the ash tree, that's a very important. Kachiapi tain dagozi ewe. Bapage mak is a, what would you say, really um, honored or important tree. And I also, I heard some elders say before that these gifts that we're given from the Creator, if, if we don't use them, well, they'll go away. So even though we're in a time where we don't have as much, maybe there isn't as much as there was a long time ago, we still go and harvest birch bark or we still harvest the ash trees or the different medicines or different uh, things that we're given to show our appreciation for this and our beliefs uh, is that it will remain or keep going because we appreciate that gift and it's not just something that we forgot about. I use snowshoes and because I snare rabbits in the winter I trap and sometimes when the snow is really deep they're really useful. What a nice tree. Now we're going to split it apart with some... Uh... When we made snowshoes I did, what I did was just try to help out as much as I could from everything from going out in the woods and harvesting, looking for a tree to splitting the wood. Oh my gosh. You gotta pick your fish net, your hand. Most of our workshops and seasonal activities are led by indigenous knowledge keepers. We also like to work with non-natives who have knowledge but connecting with other indigenous knowledge keepers at the same time. So, for example, we had a canoe build with a non-native canoe builder who works with native canoe builders, and we find that it's beneficial to come together. That way, everybody's welcome. We like to make it a place where people can come together and teach side by side and share different perspectives, and then also where everyone's welcome where there can be an appreciation for indigenous culture and knowledge. So this has got a little bit what they call a ring shake, where it... The class from Red Lake, they uh, really like being out in the woods and participating. It was just a really good time. Yeah. It's okay because we don't use that part of the tree anyway for the snowshoe, and this helps us helps us split it down here. So we'll just split this in half again. This is this is what we do. We I think half. one of the most important things that we can take from these seasonal activities and workshops is understanding how we're connected to everything, taking those teachings that our elders shared with us, and then applying them in our activities and in our life. 
So when we have these workshops and we're working with these materials, we begin to understand we have a spiritual, physical, mental, emotional connection to everything that exists, to the land and each other. So to properly understand for me that I'm not just taking something as a resource and learning how to respectfully um, work with those relatives, I, I felt like it was a nice opportunity to share, for Mary to share that kind of knowledge with the students. And, and Nate also, he had a lot of really valuable knowledge when it came to how, how to identify an ash tree, how do you know if it's the right tree to use because it has to be a certain age? Um, how do we sustainably work with what was gifted to us? How do we work with it sustainably and then take care of it? Because I feel like for, for us, that's part of our job is to be caretakers of what takes care of us. You ready? Yep. Vince Johnson is one of our students and he's also a, a native chef and great photographer. I first met Zach maybe three years ago. And since then he's been one of uh, the spiritual guys that I can look up to. And, you know, uh, he's a positive male role model within the community. He's always looking after uh, the people making sure that their best interests is kept. A lot of people know him from following around the elders when he was younger. So he learned from the elders, follow him around, and now that some of those elders have passed on, he's continuing those teachings that he learned from them. Zach Early worked for many years with deceased elder Anna C. Gibbs Wasabikwe Bun and he shares many of the teachings that she taught him with all of us. Well, I've been really involved in the culture for years now, studying the culture food-wise, and then it was another opportunity for me to learn about snowshoes and how it has to deal with different types of snowshoes and how it meant for gathering food and just working with the tools and bringing back that aspect of the culture. I'm a chef and a photographer, videographer, and I've been working with Mani Duagutigan with my catering company. So I usually cater for them when they have these classes, and then I go do documentary style photography for them and uh, take pictures of, their, of the process while I'm actually in the class learning with them. That gives me extra memory, I like to say, because I can go back to those photos and those videos that I took and rewatch them and remember like, oh, this is what I forgot, so. Uh, Mary Moose is a first language speaker. Everything we do goes hand in hand with the language, our Ojibwe language, and it's, we're in a dire time right now because uh, all the elders are leaving and Mary is one of the last few remaining. We're honored and blessed to be able to work with speakers like Mary. Our, our language is extremely endangered. It's going away. But there's a bright spot is we have um, people that are trying to learn and we're, that's what our, what we do in our work is we don't just focus on the cultural aspects of our, our like we're not just building a birch bark canoe or we're not just making snowshoes. We're, everything we're doing is we're trying to relearn how to think in Ojibwe, we're learning about the, the layers of the of the trees, the layers of the of knowledge. That's just like the layers of the the earth and the sky. And when you're carving out the ash, you see the layers, the growth rings. It's the same as learning a language. Is you're you're um, discovering that the next layer of of knowledge. Honey? 
Pastene que que go que se toque. Oh. Ya pues todo en una sinisho acá que te gustas, va a comer. Ya no sé que go que se toque. Ajá. A ver, te escaye. Escaye voy. No para que tapan a con los habat, va a cajot que va a cajot que va a estoban, en no para que te habat no me estego. Ya no Kim. Ajá. So to me uh our organization, Money Duo Get the Gun, is the, the language goes hand in hand is, and is just as important as, as making a birch bark basket or you can't do one without the other. I mean, we could do one without the other, but another thing I've noticed is we focus just on the language and I'm talking about pro programs in general or because it's difficult in this time, you know, we, since we don't have a lot of elders around that speak the language, like Mary, we tend to focus just on what we're making, like um, making uh, the snowshoes or tanning the hides, or we're just focused on that part. But when we have our elders and our speakers, we can ask them questions like, oh, how do you say this? Or they can um, guide us through how to talk about these things then it completes what we're doing is, as we connect with who we are and share that. And that's what we try to do is complement the language re revitalization that's already happening and try to work with the families of these uh, immersion programs that are happening. To me, what we do is just as important as a, a school. It's basically our first school is out in the woods. Our first school is out in creation and it's, to me it's a classroom without walls. It's about connecting back to that Anishinaabe and Eindamu and the Anishinaabe thought which is not confined to the square walls or the square buildings, these institutional institutions. I'm not uh, getting down on the institutions but it's like we're trying to relearn who we are through our language and through our seasonal activities and things that we're given as a people. I just think that with all the bills and everything, um, you know, you get more than just hands-on work. And if you really think about it, you really understand how these tools connect you to your ancestors and how it comes full circle within the culture. You know, and then the language, the tools, the stories, and how everything just connects and it becomes full circle and you just get like mind blown once you can put it all together. Very easy. Yeah, we're, we did it before, like. Did you use these when you made snowshoes? I just used knife, oh. sharp knife. Wow. That's, that's very hard. Sharp knife is very hard. This is, yeah. What I feel is the most important thing about Money Duo Gitagan is not necessarily the organization itself, but the community that comes together to do the work. We really strive to be more of a platform for others to teach and share and learn rather than we don't look at it in the way that we're out teaching people or we're out revitalizing this or that. It's more like people in the community and Anishinaabe are the ones who are doing that work. It's not us, it's them. Um, one of the reasons personally like that this is so important to me is that what we share and the view that we share I feel is what was taught by my adopted dad and by my uncles. What they shared over and over is what we try to live and how we do this work, which is why for me it's so important. And like a lot of these people are doing this work already on their own. And for us, we like to be able to support them however we can where it's needed. Maybe they don't have the ability to travel from one community to another. That's where we step in and offer and help. 
The work that we do through Money Duo Get the Gun is important because it, it helps strengthen the community. There's very few elders left. I mean, there still are some that know the language and some of our uh, stories and ceremonies, but it's becoming really few and far between. And But then when we go out into the woods and and we look around at the trees, the rocks, the, the sun, the moon, the stars, the, they're our elders. And I guess that's that's part of the, what we're doing is planting that seed for the future generations because we're going to be the elders and to me uh, going out in the woods and fasting or doing things like that is how we we think ahead to the, the future because it's all like a circle. Everything is a circle, a life. Thanks for watching. Join us again on Common Ground. If you have an idea for Common Ground in North Central Minnesota, email us at legacy at lptv.org or call 218-333-3014. To watch Common Ground online, visit lptv.org and click Local Shows. To order episodes or segments of Common Ground, call 218-333-3020. Production funding of Common Ground was made possible in part by First National Bank Bemidji, continuing their second century of service to the community, member FDIC. Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund, with money by the vote of the people November 4th, 2008. If you watch Common Ground online, consider becoming a member or making a donation at lptv.org.